Hello, fourth grade team. All right, here we go. For the week before Thanksgiving, how exciting. We are jumping into unit three, module one. So if you wanna look through your binder and read through the material, that is where this is coming from. I just noticed that I do not have the pre-assessment linked in here yet because I have not um, gotten that done yet. So when I get the pre-assessment ready to go, I will stick it in here, right here. There'll be a link to it. Um, I was uh, putting in here that we would give that out during math flooding, just like we did last time, but uh, these groups would not be giving the pre-assessment just to give less stress to those guys and then it wouldn't be as needed for them, um, if that is okay. I want to know your thoughts on that. So we would still have math flooding, but uh, most of your your math floodings would be the pre-assessment. Okay, so come Monday's lesson, there is something totally new incorporated in here. And uh, this um, would be, if, if this seems like too much and you don't think your class needs it at all, then feel free not to use this. This is just if you think your class would benefit from it. Okay, it is a quick five minutes. It's a quick, you're passing out a um, problem set for kids to try. These are the types of problems we're gonna be practicing today. So it is so that if you have a kid who already knows what you're doing and they say they are bored or whatever, then you can be like, oh, yep, you do know everything for today, even though it's awesome to be able to practice yet again and make your brain stronger and help others, you could proceed to the following options. So then I just give you some options for kids that need to move on. So there is a grade four packet that Bridges put together that you could download and print. It's a big packet, but maybe you have a couple of these on hand and it's to extend kids learning um, if needed. So all the answer keys, but then you also have all these different types of problems. So they could just go to a packet and start up. Okay. Um, then you have, let me go back here. You have this idea. You could have this linked up in their Google Classroom. They would get to go here. And this is the particular unit we're on, unit three. And they would get to pick a math at home um, activity. So they'd click on one of these, print it out, or just click on it, look at it, and put it on a piece of paper and try it out themselves. Or another option, these are not quick things. Um, they're meant to take a little bit of time. Um, another option would be this digital scavenger hunt. So click here, make your own copy. Uh, the kids would click there, make their own copy on their Chromebook, and then they would just have this. And then they would write in, there's different challenges. There's all sorts of different challenges for them to try. And these are meant, again, to not just take one second. So there's that. And then there's also versatiles you could use that are found in the Odd Pod on the first floor of the elementary, and you would borrow these. Okay, so just giving you some options for kids who are like totally past what you're doing. All right. So then this is what the quick checks look like. I have one for each day. So I'm going to have to do this for the year. But it helps to know and kids would be able to see kind of like, oh, this is the type of stuff we're doing today. Oh, wow. I'm going to practice this type of stuff. How cool is that? So Monday, you'd hand out this one and you'd give them a time limit. They only get five minutes to show what they can do. Um, and maybe they aren't able to do anything. And that is okay because this is the type of stuff we're going to try to do today. And maybe you'll just be a little bit better at it by the end of today. Okay. Then Tuesday, you'd print off this one. What Thursday, you'd print off that one. Friday, you'd print off that one. Now, yeah, you're going to have a lot of them turning it into you in five minutes, but you can quickly glance at them and know, okay, this person definitely knows what they're doing. Maybe they have a tiny little mistake somewhere where you'd have to tell them like one little thing, then they're ready to go beyond. 
Um, so it's not meant to be like you have to sit down and grade all of these. You don't. It's just, it would be a quick little thing for you to see. Not many kids are going to be able to do it. All right. Okay, so then activity one, your main activity. This is only five minutes, people. You're moving on. Activity one, um, there is a video of me helping you through this. So the kids, you would pass out a this copy, which I will bring to you, of just number lines. These are blank number lines from zero to one. And then you would print out a bunch of these strips. So I just have it looking like this. You put this on colored paper. You'd print these off and cut them all up along those bold lines. So they just have a pile of these strips. And they're going to pick one up with me in the video and make use of it. Okay? And then they're going to be writing things on their number line while using these strips. Okay? So they're going to be folding and making halves and fourths and eighths and twelfths. They will not need scissors for this first part because I'm just having them fold and label them. They're not cutting up the halves. And so then you won't have halves and fourths and eighths everywhere in your room. Okay? Then once you've finished with that, then you go to know that there is a second activity. So try to pace yourself. There is a second activity. So now they're going to use their fraction pieces that they just made to visualize. So they're going to hold up two halves and they're one whole piece. So they have one whole strip labeled one whole, and then they're going to hold up their one that they folded in half, okay? And they labeled halves. They're going to hold them up, and we're going to say, what do we know about these? Two halves is the same as one whole. They're the same amount. Put them together. They are the same. Two halves is the same as what? One. I'm going to say two halves. You say one whole. Two halves, one whole. Two halves, one whole. One whole, two halves. Same thing. Okay, now I want you to take your halves, and I want you to cut them apart. So they take their halves, they cut them apart. Now I have two halves that I've split up. Okay, I want you to hold up one half in one hand, so they have a half. Now hold up your one whole. Are these the same? No, those are not the same. I would need to have two halves to make one whole. Okay, now you could have them get with a partner with their halves and their whole, and then have them make three halves together. And what do they notice? Is it the same as one whole? No, it's more. Okay, so this is getting into that three halves is the same thing as one and a half. So then, if that makes you kind of scared to do that as a partner activity, you could have um, them not partner up and you as the teacher would just pick up um, and say okay I'm going to make up here a certain amount all right and I'm going to make use of some of your guys's pieces so then you go out and you grab three halves and you put them up on the Elmo and then you ask for what how much is this three halves yeah it's three halves okay and what do you think is that the same as one whole so then you go and you grab one whole and you put it up with the three halves. Is that the same amount? No, it was more than one whole. How much more than one? Another half. So two halves made the one and then one more half. So we're able to write that three halves is the same thing as one and a half. And you guys, that's getting into these terms called improper and mixed numbers. So then you'd pass out this sheet. Don't get hung up and have the kids writing forever and ever on the definitions of improper and mixed. I would just go straight to this sheet and then I already have the pre-made visual for you and we'd work it through together. And we'd say, what is this as an improper fraction? That's all together in one. These are what kind of pieces? These are fourths. So I'm going to put four on the bottom denominator. And then I'm going to go to that top numerator and say, how many fourths are up here? A lot of them. Seven of them. Seven of the fourths. Now that's an improper fraction because the seven is more than the four. All right, let's go to mixed number. Now the mixed number. Seven-fourths is the same thing as what? Well, we see that it made one whole candy bar, or whatever that is, one, and another whole? No, 
only three of the fourths, one and three fourths, and practice reading those, okay? All right, so there's Monday. Then Tuesday, you'd have your quick check again, so scroll down in the document and see what Tuesday's about. Activity one is gonna be the same as Monday, but without the video, you don't have me this time. So now you're gonna have more strips that you're passing out, and then you're gonna have another number line sheet that you're passing out. Okay, this time we're gonna take a strip and we're gonna fold it into thirds and we're gonna look at what happens to thirds. And then you take another strip and go into sixths. And then you take another strip and go into twelfths. Again, my recommendation is to not cut them apart. All right, writing fractions on the number line as you go. And just like I did in the video, you're trying to write that a third plus a third plus a third is equal to three thirds. You're trying to show those unit fractions together make three thirds or one whole. And we could also write that three of the thirds make three thirds or one whole. So you're just practicing that stuff on the bottom of the number line paper where you have a little room, okay? All right, activity two. Yep, a second activity that day you're gonna put up a class number line somewhere in the room, hanging from the ceiling, hanging from somewhere, hanging from two chairs or something. And you're gonna place the numbers zero and one on that line. Then you're gonna have a kid come up and place a half up there. Then you're gonna have another kid come up and place the fourths. So where would a fourth go? Where would two fourths go? And that's gonna be taped right under the half. Where would three fourths go? How about four fourths? And then one other student comes up and places a third and two thirds and three thirds. And yeah, we're trying to think about our what we just did with the strips and that when we fold and we have, we're, you could, that's why I put that above it. Now you won't have this part for you. You'll just have this line, but this is the visual you're thinking of as you do it. Okay, then Wednesday. There is no quick check here because this is your Wednesday, do what you can. I did say you could do some sort of art activity with improper fractions. I put an idea down here. Um, or, I mean me, I, I don't know if I'd do the art activity or if I would just go and do more practice with converting improper to mixed numbers. Again, fourth grade, you're sticking with numbers less than two or you could go up to three, but you're not like trying to make them do like eight and two thirds is the same as how many thirds, okay? So you're trying to keep it small because they're trying to draw it out. Thursday, quick check, check what it is, scroll down. Activity one, you're dealing with egg cartons. Here's a smart board file for you to use. The transparency the kids will need to do the activity and also this one they need on hand, okay? The smart board file looks like this. I have a lot open, let's see. Looks like this. You go to this second slide. Maybe you would have a bunch of egg cartons for kids and yarn. They would each need six pieces of yarn about a foot long or half a foot, okay? Um, try it out yourself. Uh, or you could just use this PDF right here. This transparency, you could print that out and they could just use whiteboard markers, okay? All right, back to the smart board file. Um, in the third slide, looks like this. I'd have that covered up. This is what they have on their desk, this paper. And you say, okay, first thing I want you to do, take your egg carton and split it into two equal parts. So now they're taking their yarn and they're trying to, one piece of yarn and they're trying to split it into two equal parts, okay? Then you give them some ideas. Oh, here was one idea, here was another idea. Let's not get too nuts with it, okay, and confuse ourselves. Then I'm just gonna write in that that was the name of each part, that's a half, and how many eggs were in the half? Six, okay, then I go to the next one. I do the same thing, this part's covered up. Now I want you to take some yarn or string and divide it up into three equal parts. So now they need two pieces of yarn, and now we say that that's a third and how many are in each third? Four, four eggs, okay? Then we go through all of them. By the time we get done with it, we can have some observations as to what is happening, okay? All right, 
The video is going to run out. I need to do another video for you. I'm sorry. Just a lot of info.